welcome to Fright Night. For real. I'm your host, Matt Spies, and as from that intro, you guessed it. Today, we are looking at Fright Night from 1985. Fright Night was directed by Tom Holland and starred Chris Sarandon, Roddy McDowell, William Ragsdale, Amanda Burse, Stephen Jeffries, Jonathan Stark, Dorothy Fielding, Art Evans, Nick Savage, Heidi Sorensen, and Irina Irvine. And yes, this is not Tom Holland from today. This is a director, writer, who wrote and directed many films during the 80s. Um, he was the writer on Psycho 2. Excellent. Uh, sequel to the original Hitchcock film. He wrote and uh, directed Child's Play, and he wrote and directed Fright Night. Very underrated director. I really like Tom Holland as a director. This film to me, is one of the best vampire films this side of the Dracula movies. You've heard many of my uh, reviews and everything about the uh, Dracula films, and you know where I stand on that one. My number one on that is the Christopher Lee film, Dracula, Prince of Darkness. But as far as vampire films that don't feature... Count Dracula, this film is right there at the top. Chris Sarandon gives a charismatic, smooth, excellent performance as Jerry Dandridge in this film. Now we wouldn't want to wake your mother, would we, Charlie? Then I'd have to kill her, too. Right up! And Roddy McDowell as Peter Vincent. He is equally as good in his performance. In a different way, though. You're Peter Vincent! The great vampire killer! That is a character in a movie! That, that isn't even my real name. I, no, I'm terrified. I'm... And William Ragsdale as Charlie Brewster is really good in here. And he just really makes you feel for him as a character. Um, and you really side with him whenever he's viewing his next door neighbor, who is Jerry Dandridge, who he suspects is killing these women and is in fact a vampire as you may or may not know charlie even brought the police over a few days ago charlie you did damn right i did only they didn't believe me any more than any of you amanda burse is really good as amy peterson it really does suck that other than this film, um, the only thing she really known for is uh, married with children. Really a shame, because uh, she was really cute and she's really good in her role here. I would have liked to have seen her play in more stuff, similar style roles than this. Okay, okay. Maybe it wasn't a coffin, but I did see two guys carrying something into that house. Oh, I don't understand you. First you want to make love, and then you don't. 
Um, Jonathan Stark as uh, Billy Cole is... Uh, he's good. He's good. I don't know what the fuck this guy is. Um, he can go out in daylight, so apparently he's not a vampire. Hey, kid! What are you doing? Nothing. Oh, yeah? Would just make sure that it stays that way. I don't know what he is. Right at the end, he dies like a vampire. And so, uh, sort of. <laughs> he, he dies almost like a vampire if it was Frankenstein's monster as a vampire. You know? But uh, I just I don't, I don't understand that character. Um, but the other the other great uh, performance in this was uh, one scene, one scene that that it just shows a, a good actor if they stand out in one freaking scene, and that is what Art Evans did with his Detective Lomax character. I mean, in his one little sequence in this film. When Charlie calls the cops and he comes and shows up and he goes over and investigates and Billy Cole's, you know, making it out to look like the kid's crazy. Art Evans' portrayal here was spot on and just perfect. I saw him in that room last night and he had fangs and he bit her on the neck. For heaven's sake, come on. What are you talking about? Wait, it's a vampire. Sure, and I'm dirty Harry. Now let me tell you something, kid. If I ever catch your ass down at the station house again, I'm throwing it in jail forever. Look. Great character actor that doesn't get enough credit. I mean, he is really good. And... The, one scene, and he stole the show for that little scene that he was in. Great performance. Uh, Nick Savage from uh, Friday the 13th Part 3 uh, played Bouncer Number 1. And uh, he's, uh, he's another one that he's in one scene and he, you know, he, he does, he stands out for you, you know, you, you, Take note of his performance there. He's he's really uh he's really good in his scene. Mine. You want chicken man, you go someplace else. Out of my way. Move me. Um It's it's ironic that they cast Heidi Sorensen, which is basically a Playboy playmate, to play the hooker in the scene. Um where she meet, you know, she meets Charlie and. Uh, is this Ninety Nine Oak? No, no, it's next door. Oh. And uh, you hired a Playboy playmate. Why? Just because she's hot, you know. I mean, she doesn't get naked. But Arena Irving, who plays the teenage girl, as she's credited in the credits, she's in the scene where he's watching, where Charlie's watching from the window. And she gets completely topless in the scene as he bites her on the neck. And that's when, of course, you know, that iconic moment when Jerry notices that Charlie's watching him. And this girl's credited as a teenage girl, and yet she gets topless, and yet your um, Playboy Playmate that you cast uh, has the one scene, but nothing else. All you hear is a scream, and we don't even know if that was her doing the actual scream in there that uh, could have been just a sound sample of somebody just doing or some other girl doing a scream for that um 
But nonetheless, that, that just always weirds me out, knowing that this, you know, this, this young actress, uh, Arena, um, played a scene and got, got topless. <laughs> Heidi Sorensen, who is a uh, Playboy playmate, um, plays this hooker character, and she doesn't get um, naked at all. Wow. Don't know why you cast her then. Uh, <laughs> but the weaker performances in this film are Stephen Jeffries as Ed Thompson and uh, Dorothy Fielding as uh, Judy Brewster. I mean, uh, Ed is fun in some scenes, but it is just apparent that Stephen Jeffries is not that good of an actor. Charlie? <laughs> oh, you're so cool, Brewster. <laughs> um, Dorothy Fielding as, as uh, Charlie's mom, Judy Brewster, she's just goofy. She's goofy. It's like she's playing a TV show sitcom mom instead of the mom in an actual horror film. The guy did have fangs and a bat did fly over my head and a second later he stepped out of the shadows. Now don't you see what that means? Wait, let me guess. What? He's a vampire. A what? And uh, but those two are the only real issues other than one. I'll, and I'll get to that whenever I get to um, some of the special effects stuff that I talk about in this. But Chris Sarandon is, like I said before, he is amazing as Jerry. Um, charismatic when he needs to be. Intimidating as hell when he needs to be, and uh, his, wow, he's just great in this. Back, spawn of Satan. <laughs> oh, really? Roddy McDowell as Peter Vincent is this TV show host that, that introduces the old, uh, movies and everything, and in his case, he's like a past uh, star from like the 60s, 70s, or something like that, um, maybe even older than that, you know, 50s, possibly, and he was big back in the day, playing in like um, vampire films and fighting vampires as, as this as the character of Peter Vincent and just his name Peter Vincent it is apparent that Tom Holland was a huge fan of Hammer and horror films in general um, because he came up with that name and it's a combination of Peter Cushing, and Vincent Price. And, it, and it's apparent where he's, the inspiration is, because, you know, he is like the kind of character, he's, he's very similar to the kind of character like Peter Cushing played with uh, Van Helsing. I You have to have faith for this to work on me, Mr. Vincent. So, um, his performance in here, he's just playing it up in, in, on the screen. And when you see him behind the scenes, he's just this, you know, this uh, British, uh, out-of-work kind of a guy that's just having to do this hosting gig because he's got nothing else going on. 
I'm afraid this is much more important. Really? What could be more important than my autograph? Saving a boy's life. Oh. Oh, yes, I can see where that uh, could be more important. Um, and uh, when the shit hits the fan for William Ragsdale's uh, Charlie Brewster, where he knows Jerry is a danger and he wants to stop him. And like I said, uh, the detective that comes in, played by Art Evans, does not believe him. He has no other alternative um, but to do it himself, he thinks. But Amy and Ed talk him into trying to get Peter Vincent to help. Even though he had tried after Detective Lennox rejected him, he tried to go right to Peter Vincent. And Peter Vincent acted like he was crazy then. And uh, so they go to him and they do the, the whole thing of getting him to do a test for Jerry to see if he's a vampire. Now, at this point, Jerry was ready to, you know, that night to go out and just kill Charlie. Because Charlie was apparently not going to give it up. So, the whole outcome of that, at the end of that, and then... Jerry realizing that Peter knows. Come on, let's get out of here. Just a minute. That goes for you too, Ed. I expect we have a lot of the same interests, you know, in horror movies and the occult. <gasps> Please, Mr. Vincent, you have to tell me. Our lives depend on All that. right. He didn't cast a reflection in my mirror. Satisfied now? It sets everyone up for him just going after them, full-blown. Ed is, of course, the first to get attacked and turned into a vampire and becomes a lackey to Jerry. And then one of the most badass sequences in this movie uh, happens when Charlie and Amy are chased into this uh, club. And the seductive scene where he seduces Amy on the dance floor, <laughs> it, just, it just shows how much charisma Chris Sarandon had as an actor. It's a great sequence. And then once he takes Amy, poor Charlie has no other alternative but to go to Peter. And uh, Peter reluctantly goes along with him because, uh, well, not, not right away. He goes to do it alone, but Peter shows up. He, he couldn't let the kid do it on his own. And the finale of this film is just, it's, in some ways it's so good, but in some ways it lets what could have been a perfect film down in some ways. And I will explain that in the best way that I can here, and that is special effects, for the most part, are really good in this. The only problem I have is when Jerry, when Chris Sarandon's Jerry or Stephen Jeffrey's Ed Thompson have their fangs in and they do any dialogue, it seems to me like every time they did that, I mean, they didn't put their fangs in and practice talking so that they would sound natural. Anytime they have the fangs in, they, they you know, um, it just sounds so awkward. And, you know, like Ed 
in in his scene uh, when he reveals that he's a vampire to Peter. Now, I used to admire you. You know that? Well, of course. That was before I found out what a fake you were. And he, you can tell he's not used to the fangs, and it just sounds weird, and it sounds off because of that. Um... And, J and Jerry, unfortunately, is the same way. Um, it doesn't happen, though, till the end. The rest of the scenes, when he has the fangs in, it's just moments like when he's bringing his head back and getting ready to bite, or when he just shows the fangs and he's just intimidating and he's not saying anything. That, those were fine scenes. But in the moments near the end, when he goes from full vamp mode... You have to have faith! For that to work, Mr. Vincent. And it just sounds so goofy to me. And I hate that. If he had... God, I just wish Tom Holland would have just told him, practice, practice your lines with your teeth in. I don't want you sounding ridiculous. But other than that, all the effects, like I said, I mean, the scene where... Ed turns into a wolf and attacks Peter, and Peter impales him, and then he transforms back. It is grotesque. It is brutal. It is awesome. I mean, the, the scene where Jerry flies down, turns into, jumps through the air, flies down in bat form, and attacks uh, Peter. Great. It's just those little moments, those, you know, just two basic little, I mean, well, three, uh, three if you count Ed, because Ed, in his first scene, he had the issues with, you know, the fangs just making him sound ridiculous, and then he had the scene later on with Peter, uh, when he has the Raggedy Ann uh, wig on and everything, and, and does the goofy little thing there. Oh, well, apparently... She's working nights. But other than that, I mean, the effects, the acting, all the way through this movie, like I said, the the end moments are the only parts of this that kind of let it down, and that's only with the fangs part. Um, the rest of the effects are kick-ass. Um, the whole movie performances, with the exception of uh, Stephen Jeffries and Dorothy Fielding, was... Phenomenal. Um, so, my rating for Fright Night, 1985. I give this movie a 9.5 out of 10. The only negative this movie gets is the way that, you know, Tom Holland or whoever did not make sure that Chris Sarandon and Stephen Jeffries could talk and make it sound natural when they had the fangs in. Other than that, your film is one of the best vampire films ever made. So what do you think? Do you agree with my rating on this one? Let me know in the comments down below what you think of Fright Night 1985. And as usual, if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, because it really does help my channel out a lot. And uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.